Here we are back again in section 13.2. We're going to discuss the acidity of alcohols and phenols. And this is quite literally, basically, just a review of the acidity, basicity chapter in the Klein's book. I think we covered that in uh, chapter, chapter 3, I believe it is. I don't, I don't remember. I'm sorry. So uh, let's talk about... Um, the alcohol functional group. Now, because the hydrogen here is attached to a rather electronegative atom, if we remove that proton in an acid-base reaction, we'll have a negative charge on the oxygen atom that is somewhat stabilized because oxygen is an electronegative atom and likes to have negative charge. So it's somewhat stabilized. So this is called ethanol. And if we form the conjugate base of ethanol, this is called ethoxide. Okay. So alcohols have the hydroxyl group intact. Okay, alkoxides look just like alcohols, but they're missing that hydrogen, and we call that an alkoxide. Okay, and it's spelled with a K, it's a weird uh, word, okay? So that's an alkoxide functional group. Phenols as well. We just put some random methyl groups on there. So that's a phenol. Okay. Remember, a phenol is when you have a hydroxyl group directly attached to a uh, aromatic ring, a six-membered ring with three double bonds that alternate. And when that is deprotonated, you form a phenoxide. So this is a phenol functional group, and this is a phenoxide functional group. Okay, phenoxide. All right, so let's discuss a little bit about what bases are required to deprotonate those. So first uh, and foremost, the way we're going to deprotonate is by um, sodium hydride. So if we have an alcohol, And we treat this with uh, sodium hydride. We can make sodium isopropoxide. Okay, so this is isopropanol. And this would be called sodium isoprop isopropoxide. How does this work? So NaH is a sodium ion and an H with a lone pair with a negative charge. And that's called sodium hydride. Now this reagent does not do reducing reactions. What we're going to be using it for is a uh, deprotonation. So what you do is you have your... Um, alcohol here with the lone pairs all drawn out and you draw in your hydride okay so this is going to be acting as a base and this is going to be acting as an acid and these two are going to react through the traditional handoff reaction to give you the alkoxide okay the conjugate acid of this is going to be hydrogen and hydrogen is a very non-acidic, um, innocuous thing. It bubbles out of the reaction and it, um, it's completely removed from your reaction mixture. Okay, so, you know, we don't, we don't draw H2 as a product usually, but that, that's, that's being formed, okay? It's a very clean reaction. Uh, you do have the sodium ion there as part of the product, so we need to draw that in. 
you can write O negative Na plus, or you can write it up here like that. Okay, so that's the mechanism. It's just a um, acid base reaction. Now we're not too concerned about the mechanism here, but you can also make um, alkoxides by using sodium metal. This produces, um, and this is a, not a balanced chemical equation. Well, I guess I could balance it by putting one half in there. So anyways, uh, sodium reacts with alcohol, right, to form sodium alkoxide, just in the same way that sodium reacts with water to form sodium hydroxide, okay? You do have to uh, be careful that it does not catch on fire or build up pressure or, or explode, okay? Now let's talk about the differences in acidity of simple alcohols and phenol. Now phenols are very acidic. And this is due to resonance stabilization of the conjugate base. So because the conjugate base is resonance stabilized Remember that resonance delocalization is the same thing as resonance stabilization. If there's any way to spread electrons uh, out in a molecule, that's going to lower the energy of the system because electrons repel. Okay, So if you have something like this, where you have a simple alcohol and you're producing the alkoxide, the negative charge there is stuck on one oxygen atom, we say that it's localized, it's at one location. But if we have phenol in contrast, okay, you can make the phenoxide ion here. And because of the adjacent double bonds, you have the opportunity for resonance stabilization, okay? Lone pairs next to pi bonds enable those lone pairs to be delocalized throughout the molecule, or at least in that portion. Okay, so it's still negatively charged, but there's one more resonance structure. And, you know, there's more resonance structures here. There's a total of five in the textbook if you look, okay? So because of this, the pKa of alcohols are about 16, all right? And the pKa of a phenol is about 10. Now remember, the lower the pKa, more acidic. Okay? And uh, it's a log scale. So the difference between 16 and 10, you're thinking, eh, it's only six, right? But that's actually, that's actually 10 to the power six, which is a million, okay? so. Um, phenol is one million times more acidic than cyclopentanol, all right? That's rule number one for, um, you know, resonance, okay? Resonance stabilization is going to make an acid way more acidic than something else, a million times. The effect there is tremendous, so really review your resonance, how to use the curved arrows and explain it, okay? Now, rule two is inductive effects and this is much more subtle and remember uh, when we talked about acids and bases there's a couple of sub rules right um, if you have more electronegative atoms it's going to be uh, more acidic okay um, if you have more atoms, period, it's going to be more acidic. And if they're more closer, they're going to be more acidic. Okay? So I'm just giving you the cliff notes here first before I explain it, so it might be confusing at this point. But let's look at um, ethanol. So this is ethanol. And we said the pKa is about 16 for alcohols, okay? 
And this is trichloroethanol. And the pKa is 12.2. Okay, why? Why is it more acidic? So remember, the lower the pKa, the more acidic the molecule is. So this is more acidic. Why is that? Well, it's kind of misleading to look at the neutral molecule. So let's look at the conjugate base. And let's think about how these chlorine atoms might stabilize the negative charge. So again, this alkoxide, the negative charge, looks like it's right on that oxygen atom. But remember that in these structures where you have a carbon-chlorine bond, there is a bond that's polar, and we know that the electronegativity favors chlorine. So these are like three vacuum cleaners that are pulling electrons towards itself. And there's a negative charge right next to it, okay? That would be like the dust bunny under the bed, and you have three vacuum cleaners sucking at that dust bunny. And it's beginning to uh, pull on it. And these electrons are going to be spread out a little bit. And we call this um, inductive effects, okay? So those chlorine atoms, because they're electronegative, they delocalize that formally negative one formal charge a little bit and spread that negative charge over more atoms, okay? If that was a fluorine atom instead of a chlorine atom, the effect would be greater because fluorine is more electronegative than chlorine. If we had only two chlorine atoms instead of three chlorine atoms, the effect would be less because you have fewer um, groups that are electronegative and inductively pulling on that negative charge, okay? If these chlorine atoms were further away from the molecule, uh, it would be less effective than if the chlorines were very close to the negative charge in the molecule, okay? Just think about vacuum cleaners, okay? If you have a more powerful vacuum, if you have more vacuum cleaners, and if you're closer to the dust bunny, you're going to have more effect on pulling that dirt out from under your bed, okay? The book talks about solvation, but normally we don't talk too much about that effect number three, okay? So those are the two effects you need to remember. Phenols are more acidic because of resonant stabilization, and number two, inductive effects. And here are your cliff notes. If you need more help, I would refer you back to uh, chapter three. All right? All right, now that we know a little bit about acidity effects in alcohols and phenols, let's work on problem 13.5 in the Klein second edition chemistry textbook, okay? So in part A, we have propanol versus difluoropropanol. And the thing here you wanna realize is that these two electronegative fluorine atoms have an inductive effect to stabilize the conjugate base of the alkoxide that's not drawn there, and so it's gonna make it more stable and therefore the starting material more acidic, okay? So we're not just circling a molecule here, we're explaining it, okay? Inductive effects cause the difluoropropanol to be more acidic due to inductive effects, all right? Now here we've got two alcohols with what? All right, so we have an alcohol with one alkyl group here. Okay, and here we have an alcohol with three alkyl groups. Okay, now an alkyl group is weakly inducti inductively donating, and so it works opposite to fluorine, okay? So these three carbon atoms have a lot of CH groups and things like that, electron density, that can actually, that's operating your vacuum in reverse. You're pushing uh, backwards and normally you're not stabilizing it, you're making it more angry, okay? So this is gonna be less, this is gonna be destabilized, okay? it's gonna be inductively destabilized. Not de it's not stabilizing it at all. So it's making it worse. So the answer here is gonna be this alcohol right here, okay? <coughs> Our next molecule here 
and part C is phenol versus uh, pentachlorophenol. So what are these chlorine atoms doing? They're electronegative. They're pulling electron density away from the alkoxide, or in this case, the phenoxide, which is not drawn. So the more acidic molecule is going to be the pentachlorophenol because the electronegative chlorine atoms are inductively stabilizing the conjugate base. In part D, what's happening? Well, here you can see that we have a phenol, and here you can see that we have a phenol, but there's this group at the end of it. What does that do, okay? If you look very carefully at this phenoxide group, we know that there's five total resonance structures that you can draw for this that move the negative charge around the ring. And if we look at this molecule here that has that ketone off on the opposite side of the ring, also can have one additional resonance structure that delocalizes that negative charge all the way out to the opposite side of the ring, okay? So remember, negative charge on oxygen atoms, which are very electronegative, is a very desirable thing to stabilize the conjugate base. So due to this resonance stabilization, especially placing a negative charge on an, on an additional oxygen atom, it really stabilizes the molecule. Uh, the way to think about this is uh, when you bake a potato and you pull it out of the oven and you're holding it in one hand, that's very unstable. You're burning your hand, you're like, ah! But what do you do? You, you toss it to the other one and you're like, and then you toss it to the other hand and you know, you're playing hot potato, right? You, um, you have a very hot negative charge, very, un, uh, very reactive, very unstable, but you're sharing the burden between two different oxygen atoms, so it doesn't seem as bad, okay? All right, so that's all I wanted to talk about there. I'll skip the part E there, okay? And this uh, concludes section two in the Klein second edition chemistry book.